Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We only have special guests and we've spoken already to Bibiana before about her experience on Kilimanjaro. Some of the experiences from Mount Kilimanjaro has given her food for thought as an author. Thank you so much for that journey that we can take with you, Bibiana, and let's hear from you. Has Kilimanjaro inspired you also to write about it in your paranormal stories? Or tell us a little well, bit actually, more about your author life. <laughs> well, because of the fact that I was doing the climb in June, and I had a series that I was collaborating with another author on. And last year was the last collection of, and the whole series is award-winning, the Haunted series. The Haunted series last year's was the last year. It's called Shadow Reflection. Shadow Reflection is about the world within and the world externally. And kind of when you look in the mirror, do you see the truth or is the mirror a spirit world? We're asking kind of questions like that as we're writing these stories. But I wrote a story that's in it called White Raven. And White Raven basically is very much like a lot of things I was seeing as we were climbing. But I wrote it from the perspective of the very first woman to climb the mountain. Her name was Gertrude Benham, and she was a British woman. And she climbed the mountain. I believe it was in 1923. She hired a bunch of local guys in Moshi, which is the closest kind of big town. And they got halfway up the mountain. The guys saw something on the mountain that freaked them out so badly. They left her, run, yeah, screaming down the side of the mountain. And she had to make a decision. And she was very fit. This woman was walking across the Sahara Desert and stuff. She would have been a really fun person to hang out with because <laughs> I mean, she was fearless. But she had to make a decision about whether or not she was going to go down or, or go up. She was about halfway. And she wasn't scared of what they were scared of. But in this story, I specifically say what they, they came across. But it's fiction from the perspective that the story was never written because it's just like one paragraph. The first woman to climb the tallest mountain in Africa, nobody even knows she did it. That's so sad. I based the story upon her point of view, talked about what she saw, and she did make it to the top of the mountain. But when she was coming down the mountain in my story, she saw something else, something other than what those guys saw. Added like sort of the mystical, sacred type feeling elements that you feel once you get up into the saddle. And for anybody listening, the saddle is basically once you get past any stage where there's any plants whatsoever, it's almost like hard packed desert and you're very close to the area that becomes tundra, the absolute peak of the mountain. But it's very wide and huge. It, it literally looks like scenes from the film Dune once you get up that high. But but yes, I authenticated the things I wrote before I went. And some of my stuff was around. I fixed it. Then we published it in September. So it is very authentic as far as the plants you might see. Some of the animals that visit us, visited us at night, that sort of thing. But, but yeah, travel plays a huge part in a lot of stories for me because I'm the kind of writer where I lock myself in a room and I write. And I'm writing from this well of experiences, this well of uh, feelings or emotions, that sort of thing. So I go out in the world and I travel and I have these experiences or I look for something specifically historical or unusual or interesting, and I kind of hover around it, and I don't take notes. 
I take pictures and I look at the pictures and I let the pictures tell me, is there enough here? Do I have enough emotion for this to go? And sometimes I do and, and sometimes I don't. But I even did that with my thesis, with my master's thesis. I went to Scotland to find a Pictish stone that was carved with something very specific and its crown and this very unusual pattern that was used by the Picts. But basically what the stone represented is that this woman was a woman of very high status. Now, high status for women in any generations in ancient kingdoms, tribal kingdoms, you don't usually get a headstone. You don't usually get your name carved on it. Most women at that point didn't even have a last name. You were just Jane or Jude or lady or wife. You didn't get that kind of reverence, especially in your passing. So I knew this person was someone very, very special, and I wanted to find that stone. Well, I went to where it was supposed to be. It was gone. So I'm tromping around in Scotland looking for this stone. My family's, we turned it into a family vacation. And my family's like, oh my gosh, here we go. And I'm like really upset. Sure. A quarter of a mile down the road, we're driving. And suddenly I'm like, ding, 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 ding. I'm feeling like spidey sense energy. So there's this dirt road. And my husband's, what do Scottish people do when you trespass? I don't know. We're going that way. And he's like, no, we're not. We're going that way. So we go down the road and it turns out not to be someone's house. It's an old little country chapel with a churchyard. We're talking so country. They had eggs inside the the doorway with like a little sign that said, alms for the poor, take as many as you need for the eggs. So it was like eggs in exchange for throw a dollar in or something. I was, wow. Finally, I got so annoyed at the boring names on the headstones, Thomas, John, Peter. What is up with this? I'm in Scotland. Doesn't somebody have like a Seamus or I mean, yeah. something? More interesting. And so I was throwing a fit because I hadn't found my stone. Now the names on the headstones are boring. And I walk around the side of the church throwing my fit so my husband and my daughters can't see it. Guess what is on the side of this church? I'm my special. stone. My stone, three stones had been saved from the field because they were starting to weather from the rain. Mm -hmm. And so they built this sort of shed on the side of the church and had the doors open so it was protected. It was right in the middle. I was five feet away from it when I'm throwing my fit. And if I wouldn't have thrown my fit and walked around the side, I would never have known. So I found my stone. Wow, and story. that stone inspired a lot of work for me. Beautiful, beautiful work that I haven't shared with the planet yet. I'm still looking for the right opportunity for that story because that story is definitely going to be a trilogy. It's It covers a period in history in Scotland very few people know anything about. There are two experts who know a lot about that time in history. And I contacted both of them when I was doing research. It's two gentlemen with PhDs who are kind of rivals. When I wrote to the first one and said, you're the expert in blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, this person is the expert in X, Y, Z. And I was like, okay, do you want to get a hold of him? One is at one uni and one is at the other uni. And they're kind of neck and neck in the race to be like the world experts. I've read all of their papers, all of their books at this point in my life. And I did that trying to get the information I needed. When I travel like this, when I do these kind of trips, I go walk about. So I find a place that has the energy. I can feel the energy path. I follow it and I just see where it leads me. I never know if -hmm. it's even going to be the story that I was planning on. Sometimes it's a totally different story that shows up. I really feel writers that do the kind of stuff I do, we are very magnetic You know, and the other side, the metal that we're looking for, that really strong connection will find us if we can keep ourselves open enough to do it. It's really hard in the world we live in to stay that open because it also keeps you open for lots of other things. If you're able to tune yourself, attempt to, maybe climbing Kilimanjaro will get you started. Tell us a little bit about your videos. I've followed you now for the past few weeks on Instagram, enamored by your videos. And I, I just finished my third book and I was like, 
whatever you're doing is so much cooler than my stuff. I was ready to throw everything away that I did. Stuff is so mainstream compared to you. And I know we should not be comparing each other, but well, it's just fantastic to see. And I want to say it also opened up stuff for me when I saw what you're producing, because I think we shouldn't limit ourselves. We should be more curious And I know I can follow my intuition. So when you say you found the three stones, Mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like, let me go there. I don't know why. And there is something or I meet a person and I'm like, and it's probably you. I need to meet you to find out new, crazy other stuff. And I like when people say I'm crazy. So how did that all come Um, out? Well, you've always been so curious. I think it's about curiosity and looking for something different, not mainstream. I would have to say there's really nothing mainstream about anything that I do. It's with purpose. I don't want to, I would love to be commercially successful, which to me means I make enough money that my husband will stop complaining that I don't make enough money. Because right now I feel like I'm a success because I've been doing this for eight solid years. As a mom, I started doing this when my kids were still in high school, and it was a very dramatic time, did it all through COVID, won tons of awards, collaborated. I'm collaborating with someone else right now. I've done lots of collaborations, which is not easy because you have to kind of flow with somebody who's a grown-up, who has a different aesthetic, different work all that kind of stuff. But with the videos, what really happened was, is I was creatively exhausted because I was working on so many different things. I was publishing some fiction over here. I was going to school full time and I was taking all these different classes plus full-time mom and Mm -hmm. all this other stuff. So it was all going on at the same time. And I realized when I was editing my master's thesis for, I don't even know, the 30th time with my mentor, I was ready to just lay down on the ground and just start crying. I would get packets of 77 pages sometimes a week with red all over it. Like somebody threw a tomato on it, that much red. It was just exhausting. I realized it was killing my creativity. I needed my creativity because I was doing something really different. In a really a fit of desperation, I think, I grabbed some videos, just the worst videos you can find on the internet, Pixabay or something. And n- no offense, Pixabay, but just cheap videos that really don't have very good lighting or whatever. And I threw them together like a video editor and was trying to envision this the third century in Scotland, which is not easy to envision anyway, because there's really no books written about it. There's nothing. Game of Thrones is the absolute closest. And it's kind of funny because some of the stuff in there, the maps and stuff are maps I found. So just Game of Thrones fans, just (laughs) ancient Elba. It wasn't Elba till the fifth century, but just saying there's there's a lot of, a lot of real Scottish history going on there. I had a really hard time getting to that, what I would call sort of romantic, passionate love affair with the historical aspect of the story, because it started feeling like a chore. This is something I have wanted to do since I was four years old. It needs to be fun and and joyful. Am I breaking up with my dream? What is going on here? I put some kind of music. I didn't post it because you can't just use music and use videos and you you can't just do that. But I put it together for myself and I watched it and I was like, okay, this is horrible. So I started messing around with it and said, I need to improve it, need to improve it. Well, it got to the point where it actually activated something inside of me and it made me fall in love with the project again. And it made me see the arc and it made me see the ending and I could see my characters and this majestic background of ancient Scotland. So it was all kind of, and it was before Game of Thrones. Otherwise, I just would have watched Game of Thrones, to be (laughs) honest. But what it did was it made me realize that if I could train myself, if I got stuck on paper, or if I read it aloud and it wasn't doing it, then I would try this medium or this genre, because it's really kind of a different genre. I would move over to this and see if it would reactivate it. Because there's like different sections of your brain when you're creative. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that it's just left brain, right brain. No, it's your whole brain when I'm doing it. It's my whole brain. 
And it's because the analytical side for me is lighting, color, shape, and form. And the creative side for me is, is yes, but is it beautiful? Or yes, is it epic? Or yes, does it frighten me? Or whatever it is. So for me, that's the emotional side. And you can have emotion with color or shapes or movement. But the analytical side for me is the more mathematical sort of, not data-driven, but mathematical in the sense of if you wanted to build a spaceship, would the titanium hold up if you went through a wormhole? <laughs> uh-huh. I ask myself questions like that. But anyway, the trailers have, I have trailers for every single title. It became a thing that I did. I've been doing it for a long time, but I've gotten a lot better at it. I think it's fantastic. So keep doing what you've been doing. Thank you. Inspiring others, especially you inspired me. And um, I might try out a few things. Thank you so much for taking us on a journey with your research, but also the Kilimanjaro. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday. Come and join us. Learn from other people. Scary stories on the Mount Kilimanjaro. But also download the book. Take it from the Iron Woman. Global business coaching with sports parallels. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.